Hello, this is Nate from Nate Studio Desk, the place where you come ask questions and get helpful advice. I had a comment on one of my last videos on how to primarily work in a 3D environment. Uh, in the tutorial, I was using both front and side view, which I find really effective. What are some tips and tricks for setting up additional seaplanes, uh, snapping uh, in a more intuitive and easy way? Okay, so here are the comments that I received from that last video. Peter um, had some suggestions for how to do that and also asked if he needed to switch to a four window workflow. And I think it just, it really depends on what you're doing and what type of project um, you're working on and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, it's, it's really up to you. I really like the working in the four windows uh, workflow and I would recommend doing that, but I'm also primarily making architectural projects. So maybe if you're doing more, um, you know, product design, maybe it makes sense to primarily work in 3D. Um, so, all right, let's get into uh, Rhino here and primarily working in a three-dimensional environment. Uh, so, the first thing you can do uh, is, I'm just going to go over um, sort of the basics. So let's say, you know, you're making whatever object, uh, extrude the curve, make a box, um, and let's say, let's, let's work with seaplanes a little bit to understand them. So I'm going to type in named seaplane, and why is that not showing up? Oh, it's showing up in my, um, over my other window there. Um, okay, so I, I really don't I really don't like working with seaplanes. I just I find them annoying, and I think there's better ways to get geometry onto surfaces. That's why it might be helpful to know exactly uh, what the comments, what you're actually trying to do, to see if what what are some tools that you can use that would better accomplish that. Um, but I think. If you are going to model a lot of geometry based on a different seaplane, this can be very helpful. So I don't really recommend it if you're switching back between seaplanes all the time. Um, but um, for the sake of this tutorial, and let's say you're primarily working, um, let's say like on a 22 angle degrees, like let's say you're working on a roof, then you know, and then it makes sense to set up that seaplane. Okay. So this is our standard seaplane, and to make a new seaplane, we can type in uh, seaplane and then make a new seaplane there. Um, and you can see that now it's attached on the top. And you can then save that as, let's just save it as seaplane 001. Um, and then that's our original one, and now when I go double click, it's 001. Um, let's say this is at an angle and I want to model a bunch of stuff on this angle. Um, press C plane and there's a couple options here. You, you can select the surface uh, and base it off of that. And then you select the, the, the red and the green. And then you can see that everything's going to be based off of that. Uh, and then you can just do saved as and let's just do roof angle. So that's the roof angle. And then now, you know, when I'm drawing on this, um, I'm going to be snapping to that angle. And very quickly, I can switch between the different um, references. So let's say, you know, I want to draw on this, this left side here. I can just double click um, and then draw on that face. You can also use three point here. And then you set your two points. I just press space to repeat the command. Another way you can do is it through the view, and that just puts the seaplane to whatever view you're at. And then you can also um, base it off the gumball, elevation, uh, object, or rotate the seaplane. Then the next thing, um, and, and switch back, the next thing that you can do, which I think is also helpful, is using the gumball, if you press control, um, and then click on the gumball, gumball, you can reorient the gumball onto um, 
a part of your object. Uh, if you press control, you can rotate your gumball and then it uses a different, um, you basically are resetting how that object is going to respond uh, using the project and pull command. Uh, so for example, let's say you have a surface and uh, might as well uh, make a new seaplane based on this now that we're we're using seaplanes um, so here let me do surface and again you can you can make your own three point you can make your own um, or just choose a surface um, and base it off of of that um, and then let's draw on let's just create some crazy um, geometry here and just pull it off and I can press so there's the project and the pull um, why they made these separate commands I'm not very sure uh, essentially they're basically the same tool but uh, the pull command works better if you have a cylinder or a lot of complex geometry I usually use project if I have a curve and I want to just project it to a seaplane um, that's when I use project. But so let's first use project. So you could do project, and for this we'll do C plane, project to C plane, and then it projects to a C plane, and then you can work on it. So sometimes you'll notice you'll be drawing, and for some reason or another, your geometry um, goes in the Z direction, and you need to adjust it. The other thing you can do is you can just select project, and then play select the surface. Um, here I have a custom direction on uh, so I'll, I'll just choose the direction of that and it projects the curve directly onto the surface so maps the curve onto the surface. Pretty useful. The next one is um, let's undo that really quick. Now the other command is pull and then uh, select curves to pull Okay, and then select the surface, and then it, it, it maps it on there. Um, and you'll see that um, it goes on there. So, um, especially if you have um, a curve, let's go, just go back to the normal, especially if you have, let's say, a cylinder. Oh, let's go here. Cylinder. So this works, the pull command I've, I've found that it works really good with, um, with, some, with more wrapping around objects. So, um, whoops, I extruded that by accident. So we'll do pull and select the curve, select the geometry, and it can wrap around that project that, that, that really easily. The last thing that I wanna show you is um, the orient tool, another way to get objects onto surfaces in certain ways. So let's try it out. Or So you type in orient, uh, pick two reference points, and then let's pick these two reference points, and you can very quickly map objects onto uh, surfaces. Let's see if I want to do anything else. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, if you do have any other tips or tricks on how to best work in a 3D environment, please let me know. Uh, again, I prefer working in with the four screen uh, workflow, but I think it also depends on your project, how complex it gets, and uh, sort of what workflow you want to you wanna have. If you want to get good at just working in 3D perspective, I think that's uh, completely fine and you can find ways to do that uh, really well. So uh, yeah, I hope that was um, hope that was helpful and thanks again for commenting on my videos. I appreciate it and uh, see you later. Bye. Have a good day.